Hello, and welcome to Brain Lord. I am Liquidy Poo, and with me is Casnor. Hello. This is an action RPG that I played as a child, and I'm doing this LP for the Something Awful forums. My buddy Casnor here is mostly blind. Aside from all the other times we've tried to do this. <laughs> Let's not worry about that, though. <laughs> and during the prologue, uh, let me uh, talk a bit more about the game. So, it's an action RPG with plenty of elements that you may recognize if you've played a Zelda game before. If, uh, let's see... There is one major difference that I in particular enjoy, and that's jumping on command. <laughs> yeah, all you could do in Zelda is jump at specifically designated ledges. Or, you know, you could get the rock's feather, but who needs an item to jump, right? <laughs> Freaking elf people, that's who. But no, we're, we're not an elf. Instead, we're the descendant of a dragon warrior. I, I can only that, imagine what the dragon warrior's name is. No, no it's not. So, our character named Ramir, he is here listening to his father tell the tale of the dragon warriors. And he's also apparently looking for the Tower of Light in search of a dragon who lives at the top, so that they can become best buds. A cup of coffee, you know, little Sartre, wear little berets. Anyway... So our, our father here is giving us just this last little pep talk before he disappears forever. That's He's, it. He says disappears forever, but we don't actually know that yet. I, I mean, that's totally not a spoiler, no. But here we awake at uh, present time. We're in a bar, very brightly lit bar. It's actually just the bar of a hotel, which explains why it's so brightly lit. Yeah, most of the hotel bars I've been to are pretty brightly lit. Got big, nice windows. Oh, maybe I've been to some pretty nice hotels. You gonna brag much? Humble brag. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> and so here we, we've got some speculating about this note posted on the wall. It's actually asking for people to go to the Tower of Light. That, that's odd. Wasn't our dad just telling us about this? Didn't he disappear forever, or at least the last 15 seconds? <laughs> oh, I don't know. But uh, these people here talking to us, these people with rather unique looking sprites, they're actually kind of important. Who'd have thought, right? They've got cool names, too. Like Ferris. <laughs> Not Bueller, just, just Ferris. And rain. And, <laughs> and our silent protagonist apparently has the look of a job seeker about him. I was just gonna say rain. He doesn't remind you of anyone, does he? Mm, all purple, one spiky shoulder plate. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I can't think of anything. Please don't tell me he uses a giant sword. Uh, I don't think we ever see him in action. I guess we'll never know. And so here it is, we, uh, we have read that somebody needs to go get some dragon scales, and I think that man's name is Marlin. I could be wrong, could just be reading what's on screen, I don't know. Well, dragon scales are pretty useful. But now we finally have control of the character, and that means I'm going to talk to all of the important people. You know, she says the handbills on the wall change. Uh, I think that one changes maybe once. If she uses plural, there's clearly only one there. And Cashin likes the name Tower of Light, 
but honestly, seems kind of, I don't know, generic? Well, it's such a better naming convention than the, the names we have now. I mean, Sears Tower, really? Uh, I think you mean Willis Tower? I actually hate that. And no, I did not just wiggle around. Uh, when you take the drink from the barman, the game takes control for you. And here I'm talking to these guys for context. Um, getting dragon scales is our primary job, but we do have one thing to do first. Kill ten bear asses. <laughs> you don't kill bear asses, you kill bears to get the asses. And furthermore, it's not bears. I know. We'll find out. We'll find out. And uh, that second soldier mentioned that the Rennell house was the two-story mansion behind the hotel. I don't recall if he actually said the word mansion, but it's as big as the hotel, come on. <laughs> In your day, there were enough dragons to fill the sky. That seems like a lot of dragons. What is this, Monster Hunter? No. No, it couldn't be. No, and we certainly wouldn't hunt enough dragons in Monster Hunter to thoroughly extinct a species, now would we? Oh, maybe Monster Hunter's the prequel. <laughs> All for the sake of wearing their head as a hat. And here's our first task. We gotta kill a bunch of mice. They're fast... Their, their movement is very erratic. I hate them for these sole reasons. Oh, you seem to do pretty well. We'll see them one more time, and I seem to remember that's the last time we'll see them after that, so here's hoping I'm right. And our reward for killing all these mice is a new shield. You can see it's got a durability of 30 out of 30 right now. Sorry, that says endurance. Thank you very much. It's durability. <laughs> and the scrap of paper just gives us a, a nice little hint for uh, a secret coming up in the dungeon. Divided into four parts, huh? Yeah, that's not relevant at all. As far as I remember, there is nothing divided into four parts. It was really divided into three parts. They were called courage, wisdom, no, and power. No, and no, no. <laughs> And there's the shield you can block in all four of the cardinal directions. Isn't that nice? Well, isn't it? N yes. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. It would be nice if you could block in the ordinal directions, too, but I guess we're just... <laughs> what are you doing? And here I'm, I'm showing Mrs. Rennell that, yes, we did find something useful. <laughs> and jumping through doors. Vital. Well, you know, Mega Man aficionados know a thing or two about jumping through doors. And this man is blocking our way out. What a jerk. We'll find another jerk later. But first... We should talk to the man who posted the bill. You remember his name, don't you? Well, it's Marlon. Marlin the oh, Blacksmith. Okay, you are, you are paying attention. Good, good. <laughs> so, these dragon scales, uh, what did he say? 10,000 gold? 10,000 each. Yeah, we've only got 6,000. That seems like a. That seems like something we want to go get. You know, get some. Get a handful of dragon scales and just get rich quick. <laughs> oh, and to the south of us is Toronto. So, uh, <laughs> this takes place in Canada. <laughs> That suggests the Tower of Light is actually the CN Tower, which has a, <laughs> well, the last time I was there, it had a really awesome ride in the base. It's probably going to look a little different. <laughs> and uh, that guard said, I hope you know how to jump well, and I, I was demonstrating for him. And here's our first real enemy of the game. Forget mice, now we're fighting these goblin dudes. Do they only have one eye? Or is that they do only have one eye. They're Cyclops goblins. That's... Goblops. Goblops. <laughs> 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 
and uh, I'm actually going to be returning to town into a, uh, you know, just a second here. I wanted to farm up a little bit of cash because there's one building I haven't visited yet that we really ought to visit before we go on this grand adventure. Well, don't and leave I'll me give in you a hint. <laughs> Well, I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with that empty box next to our health bar at the bottom there. Bam, that one. Right there. And uh, move out of the way, please. Oh, she's, she's worried about the monsters. She I'll, has to I'll tell get you about something. them. <laughs> I'll get something to take care of the monsters. And, yeah, that's right. Magic. And I'm going to buy Bound. Also, the, the magic salesman is rude. Uh -huh. I have money. Thing to say. So here you can see Bound. It uh, bounces off of uh, obstacles in the room, as well as uh, the edge of the screen. And these two little magical orbs are far more powerful than my sword swings. We'll be seeing that quite often. Seems like an odd way to break the fourth wall to bounce off the edges of the screen and obstacles in the in the world. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to explain that away. I, don't, I wouldn't call that a fourth wall break. <laughs> I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for all of this. Maybe they're bound by the mental range of the user and he can only see that far ahead of him at all times. Because eyes work that way. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Video game eyes work that way. As you can see, Bound was actually a pretty good purchase because it one-shots these goblops here. But never mind that, it's spooky cabin time. You should, you should loot it. Pick up everything that isn't nailed down. Do you have a claw hammer? Then you uh... can get things that are nailed down. We're, we'll worry about that later. For now, we've got uh, more Goblops down here. I wish that was their official <laughs> name. But uh, coming here was very worth it, because here we have our first fairy companion buddy. We're going to go ahead and name him Ifri. Ifri? Ifri? I don't know. I'd, I'd go with Ifri. Ifri? Yeah. Sounds good. From, from the mythical Ifri? Yes, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, Ifri is a Crimson Jade. And what the Crimson Jade does is the Crimson Jade well, shoots fireballs. Look at that. This little fella will start off about the same power wise, you know, compared to us. But by the end of this video, uh, Ifri will be stronger than us. Like, much stronger. Hey, a heart container? Uh, I believe it was just called a heart. <laughs> and it does do exactly what you think. You use the heart, and it adds one to your health bar. But there's a reason I didn't use it right away. And that's because if you've lost any health, it refills that health, as well as giving you the extra uh, segment of health. Oh, that's useful. HP. Yes. So, if you want to be a little min-maxi, and uh, apparently I do, I hold on to them and use them as healing items in addition to uh, just boosting my max HP. Well, what is that? Just a floating bat thing. Well, it's nothing to worry about. Oh. Drakey. This is Enix. That could be a Drakey. <laughs> And so, that little goblin man dropped a blue gem. I can't pick it up. Oh, I wonder what it's for. Do you know what it's for? I'm gonna pretend like I don't. <laughs> no, of course you don't. You've never played this before. I and certainly have never why, played it. Why, look at this. It's an experience orb for our little fairy buddies. 50 experience is a lot of experience, it seems. 
you would think, but I mean, it's just the first level up for that little guy. It's going to take quite a lot more after the first few levels. And, uh, oh, I picked up an apple. Gotta look at that apple. Three hit points, not bad. I'm kind of surprised a goblin was carrying a fresh apple around, but, eh, you know, video game drops. Either that or they've got good taste. I mean, who doesn't like apples? Weird people. I'm gonna go with weird people. Yeah, no, I don't agree with you there. <laughs> and uh, that weird dark spot is totally the shadow being cast by the Tower of Light. <laughs> I had to stop and look at it because it, it looks really weird. I know what it is. It's a butterfly sitting on the back of an Oscar statue. I can see where you're coming from there. It does kind of look like that, doesn't it? But it's actually a save point. Oh man, I would have gotten to filmmaking if I thought that an Oscar statue would act as a save point. Yeah, just imagine the save scumming you could pull in real life with that kind of stuff. That does explain certain people's careers. And we've got uh, some... We, we've got part of a standard enemy fair here. I mean, I see a skull, but where's the rest of the skeleton? Well, I mean, there's... These are these are guys in Zelda 2. I mean, totally original character, do not steal. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there's the rest of the skeleton. And... Oh, man, does it take forever to kill that thing. But... Oh, oh, look at that. Also, good job, Ifri. He leveled up. Was that his third or his fourth uh, experience gem? Oh, that's a good point. I actually... He must have picked up more than two. But he only leveled up once. Something about that math doesn't add up, actually. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. I may have to look into that later. Maybe the experience orbs have varying amounts of uh, value attached to them. Well, wouldn't that be interesting? I will admit it's not the first nonsensical thing this game does. <laughs> and it certainly won't be the last. I mean, the way experience orbs work is that uh, they're actually tied to specific enemies, and once a fairy buddy picks it up, it's gone forever, with one exception. So, no, uh, no farming? Not, not for a little bit, no. Jump up the stairs, I approve. Oh, always jump through transitions. Man, reminds me of being a teenager when I used to jump up the stairs. All the time. Just skip all of them. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Oh no, I could I could usually do a, a full flight of stairs in like three steps. Hmm. I'm a pretty big dude. <laughs> anyway, what do we have hmm. here? Well, it, it appears we've run into our first riddle. We have a strange configuration of walls and a boulder. That you can push. Oh, look! Here's a switch! And the switch opens the door. And that little plaque on the wall is telling us we can reset the puzzle if we leave and come back in. Very handy. Now you but, show uh, that boulder who's boss. I mean... Oh, uh, this very taxing puzzle here we have to solve. And oh my. I think we might have figured it out. It begs the question, why did they make... It's so far away from the Switch when it was a tutorial puzzle. Ah, uh, it's a good question. But it was also easy? Yeah, well... It's just tedious. Uh, 90s game design, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, basically. And there's a reason I saved there. You always want to save at uh, save points for more than just saving your game, it turns out. Oh? We'll find out later. Keeping that one a secret. This I don't know anything about. <laughs> surely. 
Surely, you must not know anything about it. <laughs> Given that this is our very first time trying to record this. We certainly haven't oh. run into any problems with Skype or anything like that. That, that wouldn't And happen. here's our second run-in with mice! Look at that! Oh man! Oh, now you can kill two at once! Oh, well, you know, kill two mice with one spell. That's what they say, right? Is it? Hmm. Well, Ferris hates mice, so we did her a huge favor. It seems the treasure chest contains a magic spell that she already knows, so we get to have it. It sure was nice of her to give us the spell that she already has. Well, I, I imagine sharing magic isn't quite as easy as, I don't know... Handing you the medallion? But then she wouldn't have it. What does she need it for? She's just hanging out in a room with mice. But because she needs it, that's why. So, <laughs> we have the magic shot spell. It, uh, you know, just goes straight out. I, Not very interesting, I saw honestly. <laughs> and you did see that, didn't you? We have bouncing eyeballs. And they take forever to kill, so I'm not really going to bother with them. They're not worth the time investment, given that they only drop a hundred gold, and it took way too long to kill it. it. This this may be a good time to mention that that's that's gold dropping directly into your wallet. Yeah, yeah, those numbers they aren't experience or anything doofy like that. It's how much money that monster was worth. You may notice the gold counter, you know, when Barness is not talking to us. Man, that gold counter goes up. And he's he's telling us to read. Reading is good. But we have another puzzle to solve. With a new puzzle element. Why there's steel holy balls. balls. A pair of them. And here's a brain jellyfish. Perhaps the titular brain lord? I don't know. I don't know if he's big enough but, to be a lord. Maybe, maybe but, a brain uh, baron. You, you can see that he, he did something funky to us. Uh, that weird little electrical you know, zappiness that happens. It's actually already worn off, and I was trying to jump back and forth to demonstrate what it does, but when that lightning flickers around you, it actually stops accepting all of your input. Oh, But it can't necessarily ju uh, stop a jump that's already in motion, so it's probably a poor way to demo <laughs> it. Suffice it to say, that is a terrible status effect and you don't want it. Because what if it flickers at just the moment you need to swing your sword around? So what you're saying is, don't, don't hit the uh, the brain barons. Yeah, don't don't hit the brain barons. Not unless you can hit them from a safe distance. No idea how you would do that. I mean, we do have magic, but I mean, you never know. They could close the distance on you. <laughs> We saw how uh, <clears throat> fast that guy was, right? <laughs> hey. That's, saw that I didn't fruit. care about it. How long has it been in that treasure chest? Well, not long enough though. I mean it it's still fresh fruit. Well, that is the best kind of fruit. And now we've got uh, platforming. I nothing love platforming. Too... <laughs> nothing too taxing right now. It's just ow. It's just uh, you know. Oh, what's that? I think we found the reason why you want to talk to every save point. Oh. You see, when it says any place you've been, it means any save point you talked to. And lucky for us. The, um, uh, the the ladies that run the hotels in town, they count as save points. Oh, that is useful. Yeah, so you can teleport to, um, I believe it's four save points in every dungeon, and then towns themselves. And a longbow. And a new gun. We've, 
we finally have a way to attack those darn brains from a distance, man. <laughs> I'll be showing it off as soon as we find an enemy. Probably that archer outside of the room here. You have infinite arrows? Yes, you do. Man, that must get heavy. <laughs> and you can sort of change the direction of your shot. If you've played Smash Bros, think of it as redirecting the Falcon Punch. <laughs> that makes sense. And with that, I believe we've hit the end of the first episode. Well, it's been a pleasure. <laughs>